Our next presenter is the lead of the Aurora team at Google. She helps to make JavaScript frameworks fast. She's coming in from San Francisco, where maybe not coincidentally, she also has a hobby in collecting wine certifications. <laughs> She's not going to talk about wine tonight or rum, but maybe later, depending on what the open bar has. She's going to talk about improving image performance in JavaScript frameworks. So please raise a glass of Cabernet Sauvignon and give it up for Kara Erickson. Uh, hi there, uh, I'm Kara Erickson, and I'm here today, as Rick mentioned, to talk about framework tools for image optimization. Uh, a little bit about me, I am a staff software engineer at Google working on the Chrome team, and again, as Rick mentioned, I lead a team uh, called Aurora. If you haven't heard of Aurora, it's an initiative where Chrome engineers collaborate with open source web frameworks to improve performance across the web. So basically, our goal is to make framework apps as fast as possible. And in practice, this means that we partner with a bunch of different frameworks like Next.js and Angular and Nuxt to build features, to build, to build features uh, that help developers optimize their applications. And one such set of features is our suite of image components that uh, I'll be talking about in more detail today. So our Next image, ng optimized image, and Nuxt image components. But before I jump into those, I wanted to take a step back and explain our thinking behind image components. You might be wondering why developers don't just add best practices straight into their applications. Like, why do we need yet another abstraction? Uh, and as people who think about performance all the time, it's really easy to forget <laughs> how overwhelming and intimidating image optimization can be when you're first getting started. There's a lot to remember. There's a lot of new concepts to understand. Um, and I dumped a bunch of them on this slide just to kind of make a point. <laughs> uh, but this isn't even exhaustive, right? Um, so having an abstraction that can help you remember these things and maybe even do some of them for you can be a really useful tool. In addition to having the expertise, another obstacle can be resources. So in a recent community survey that Chrome conducted, half of respondents said that they don't optimize for core vitals and don't have any plans to anytime soon. And the top reason wasn't because they didn't think performance was important. The top reason by far was lack of resources. And that's really our target audience, uh, framework developers who don't really have the resources to take the time to optimize themselves. Um, so that's where framework components really shine. If you have built-in components, uh, they can integrate deeply with the frameworks that they belong to. Um, and you have so much more information about how the page is structured and when it hydrates. And you have the whole file system to do static analysis, right? So you have all this information that you can use to improve the developer experience and build things in. And there's also a maintenance benefit. Uh, so you might have companies that have built their own image components, but they don't have time to really maintain them as new web features come out. Um, so this is another thing about using a framework component where you don't have to maintain them over time. Um, I think this works. Okay, so this is kind of a teaser to show that image components also can have an impact. So I guess I should run this one more time. Uh, but this is a comparison of before and after using our image directive. Oops, make that work again. Oh, you see after it's on the left. Um, so you can see that you know transitioning to use a tool like this can actually make a big difference in your app. OK, so hopefully I've convinced you that image components are a great idea. Um, so now let's jump into actually talking about them. And we're going to focus on the Next.js and Angular components just as a lightning talk. So, uh, OK, so let's start with Next.js. When we were designing this component, we wanted to make sure that common optimization techniques were really easy. So these are things like adding width and height to prevent layout shift, lazy loading images to reduce resource contention, priority hints preloads, responsive image support, that type of thing. So I'm going to go through a really simple demo example to show you how our Next.js image component can make these techniques really easy. OK, so here we have a normal Next.js page. It has a regular image tag. Um, so first, let's migrate it to use the image component. So we import the image reference from the Next image package. 
and replace the image tag with the image component. Um, and then we just have to update the source string to a direct import of that image file. And that's it. So now we're, we're migrated. So, so what does that look like under the hood? So what image tag are we actually generating? So you can see already, this is a lot more stuff than we actually just wrote, right? Um, so for one, the width and height attributes are generated automatically. So for local images, Next.js can extract the dimensions at build time and just add them to your template for you, which can be really handy. We also have native lazy loading by default. Uh, we expect that most of your images probably won't be critical, and we don't want them to compete with your LCP resource. And we also generate a, uh, a sensible density source set uh, because we don't want people to forget about pixel density, but we cap it at two to make sure that we're not requesting super large images on mobile. Okay, so already just by transitioning to use the component, we can already cross the top two off of our list with height lazy loading. But you might be wondering, okay, that's great for your normal image case, but what about your LCP image, right? Um, you do not wanna be treating that the same way. So we do have an attribute to prioritize. So if you add the priority attribute to your LCP image, uh, you get a different image tag generated. So the loading equals lazy is replaced by fetch priority high. And that makes sure that it's boosted as much as possible. And in the head, we generate a preload tag. And we have you know, attributes like image source set that people often forget. Uh, if you forget to add the priority attribute, or maybe you don't even know what LCP is, we can helpfully you know, log a warning that tells you that your LCP image wasn't prioritized. Okay, so that takes care of prioritization. Uh, what about responsive image support? So normally with an image tag, you would add a source set and a sizes attribute. Uh, with the image component, you can add a sizes attribute, and that gives us a bunch of information about what you're trying to do. And we can generate a source set based on that. So if you add sizes, we figure that you're trying to do something responsive. And we can generate a source set that's a little bit more granular based on common device breakpoints. So this can be really handy if you're migrating a large application, because normally you kind of have to remember, OK, like what are the device sizes that I care about? Um, and then you have to do it you know, image by image. Uh, so this can be really handy. OK, so that's a whirlwind tour of the Next.js image component. Uh, in just a few minutes, we were able to get quite a lot done. OK, so let's move on to the Angular image directive, ng optimized image. So for this, a lot of the techniques that we're trying to do are really similar. Um, you know, image optimization hasn't changed. Uh, but the framework is extremely different, right? Angular is a fully front-end framework. Um, it doesn't have any of the server infrastructure or the you know, cloud services that Vercel has. Um, and so the implementation looks, the implementation and the API looks a bit different. Uh, but three out of these four things are the same, but we'll also be talking about CDNs. Okay, so just as before, we're going to migrate an Angular component to with a regular image tag to use the image directive. So we start by importing ng-optimized image from Angular Common, and we add that to the imports list. And then to activate the directive, we change source to ng-source. And there is one more step, which is to add the width and height attributes. So the image directive is a little bit newer in Angular than Next.js. We don't statically generate this for you, but we do mandate that these attributes exist so that you don't forget about layout shift. OK, so what image tag do we generate? Um, so again, we add native lazy loading by default. So we can go ahead and cross that off our list. Uh, but you might have noticed that the automatic source set is missing. And that's because if we want to have a source set that works, we need images available at different widths, right? Those images that we're trying to request have to exist. Uh, so with Next.js, the way that this works by default is that uh, we have Vercel's you know, in-house image optimization API where they can request images at uh, different or generate images at different widths at request time. So for Angular, we don't have this infrastructure. So generally, we recommend pairing the image directive with your favorite image CDN. And there are built-in integrations for some of the most popular ones, like ImageX and ImageKit, Cloudflare, Cloudinary. Uh, we're planning on adding a few more, uh, but you can also configure your own. OK, so let's pretend for a moment that our source for our cat image is coming from ImageX. Um, so you'd import this image loader and add it to your provider's array. And then you pass in you know, the host domain of your images, whatever that is. 
And then in your actual image tag source, you can just put the name of the image instead of the full URL and we'll kind of stitch it together for you. And as soon as you add that loader, you can see that the source set is generated for you once again. Um, you might also notice that we've added this extra option. Um, for built-in CDN loaders that we know a little bit more about, we can recommend certain options. Like for ImageX, we're, we recommend auto equals format because we know that that's gonna request more modern image formats. Okay, so that we can cross the second thing off our list, optimize the settings with built-in CDN loaders. Uh, as for prioritization, the API looks really similar to Next.js. So you'd add the priority attribute and you would get fetch priority high once again. And a preload hint once again is generated in the head. But this is only for SSR mode because uh, the Angular community overwhelmingly uses client-side rendering. Um, so we have to have another solution for client-side rendering because typically Angular apps share one index.html throughout the whole application. And so if you're generating preloads for one shared index page, you end up with a lot of preloads on every page. Um, and so for client-side rendering, we generate a pre-connect hint instead, which is a lot more shareable. Okay, so that's prioritization. And lastly, for responsive images, again, it's you add a sizes attribute and uh, we'll generate a source set for you that's more granular. Uh, okay, so now we've kind of gone through two of the you know, potential offerings for image components, uh, but what impact do they actually have in the real world? So we've done a little bit of testing. Uh, we worked with Lebon Coin uh, to see what their difference in LCP was before and after pushing Next Image to production, and they saw a 41% improvement. We also have been measuring at scale through HTTP Archive, and we have about like 3,000-ish examples. Um, and the average improvement for our target audience is 400 milliseconds. Uh, for, okay, so for our Angular image offering, uh, we worked with Lens and to measure their LCP change in a lab environment. So unfortunately not in production this time, but we saw a 40% improvement. And we did a similar HTTP archive analysis and saw an average 300 millisecond improvement again for the 80th percentile. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and try these out and let us know what you think. Thank you, Karen.